Take your Bible, turn to Psalms 37. Psalms 37. We have been looking in Psalms 37 for four weeks, and um, Lord willing, today and two more, and we'll find the end of my favorite psalm, Psalm 37. In the second week of this series, I made a quote that I want to quote you again. The greatest thing that we can learn to do in life is to be introduced to the Almighty God, to accept Him, to come to know Him, and to learn to let Him be Lord in our life. I, I'm going to say the first part of that statement again. I don't really want you to miss it. The greatest thing we can learn in all of life. To know that there is a God, that know that we can come to know Him as our Lord and our Savior, and then look to learn what that means, to learn what it means to trust Him. I know we've been slowly walking through Psalms 37, but David wrote this when he was older, and it had been a lifetime of experiences and he wanted us to learn those experiences with him. As a matter of fact, he wrote it in the form of a song that would be sung. I believe one of David's strengths was he had a musical flair within him, but he learned that if you, if you have a song in your heart, you will sing it during the day. Now, I know we've been walking through this slowly, but I really think that there's some things that I wanted us to really dig down and learn uh, very much. I wanted them to be very uh, on our lips and on our thoughts. The best way to understand God better is to learn His truths and then to put them into practice in our lives. We're always surrounded by difficult circumstances and by the way, difficult people too. And we don't really know what we need to do so we learn God's truths, and we learn to put those truths into practice in our life by doing them. Trusting God, the only way you're going to learn to trust God is in the act of doing what it is that He wants us to do. And you don't have to make plans for, uh, I'm, going to, I'm going to trust God in the coming year. I'm going to trust God over this new circumstance. Just learn to trust God and do the next right thing that's in front of you. If you can start to trust God in the next thing that's in front of you, then that's how you're going to learn to do it, right? When the baby learns to take those steps, they just have to take the first step. After that, they're going to take a few steps. Before that, they're going to be running. Amen? So you just have to do the next right thing that's in front of you, and you just let the Lord, learn to let the Lord be the delight of your life. There's a lot of things that are going to uh, be looking for your attention. A lot of things that the world wants you to follow after. But just trust me, if we can just let Jesus be Jesus, if we can just let the Almighty be the Lord of our life, if we can let Him be our delight in our life, then everything will follow after that. We, today we're going to learn what it means to commit our way unto the Lord. Stand with me in honor of reading God's Word. Psalms 37, verse 5, says this. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in Him. Here's a promise. And He shall bring it to pass. He shall bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noonday. Your righteousness like the light that shines. Your justice, your standing, as the noonday, that means no shadows. Amen? Just the pure light of God in our life, that's what we yearn for, that's what we need, that's what we long for. And I pray that that's what we live for. Commit your way to the Lord. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Now, Father, this is once again the, your divine word that was lived and practiced and put to the test in David's life. And Lord, he did not find you wanting, he found you faithful. And Lord, as we walk through this thing called life with this hardships and difficulties that seem to be hiding around every corner, I pray, Lord, that dear Jesus, that you would just be the, the mighty Savior, the stronghold, the, 
the rock, the tower of strength that we need. Lord, that our ear will be open to You. That You would be the encouragement in our heart. Lord, that You would strengthen us and give us the wisdom to choose. And I pray, Lord, that we would have the will to go along with that. So Lord, um, may today, may the, the life that Jesus came to live for us, to give us, may it come alive. Lord, I know that there are many principles and precepts and truths that we have learned, but we've also learned to put them on the back burner. I pray today for your glory, but for our best and benefit because we stand in need of you. Lord, let these truths, your truths, Holy Spirit, speak them into our life for good. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You may be seated. See if these words sound familiar to you. Trust in the Lord. Delight yourself also in the Lord. Today we're going to focus on what it means to commit your way to the Lord. Is there a common bond that you see there? It is the Lord. We trust in the Lord. We delight in the Lord. We commit our way to the Lord. The Lord, this is the covenant name of God. Jehovah. Jehovah. A covenant is a binding contract. It binds both parties that come into agreement with it. The covenant was created by God. It was proffered by God. The God who knows all, who knows what we need, who will be there with us, said, this is my contract with you. By the way, he wrote it all. It is instigated by God. It is made possible by God. It is fulfilled by God. But, though he comes and he says, here is my covenant contract with you. I lay it before you. I offer it to you. But you must choose to accept it. So it's an agreement. It's not just something that God chooses for you and you just have to receive. It's an agreement. God comes and says, I offer you this. What did he offer? Himself. And everything that is God came with that offer. He says, I give you the fullness of, of the deity, of the reality of God, I will allow you the opportunity to be called fully, completely a child of God. Joint heirs with Christ. Does God love His Son? Does He love you in the same way? Was it fulfilled by the faithful Son of God, Jesus Christ? It was offered, but we must come and accept that. Now that is not to be bartered. It's not like you're going to sit down with God like you're going to buy a car and there's this back and forth and you say, well, uh, you're making this offer and uh, let me make you a counter offer. That's not how it works. Not in one iota. He makes the offer and you come as you are. And by the way, he's willing to accept you like that and you accept it, and you get to receive all of it, but the price is you. He wants to give you His everything, and from you, He wants your everything. He is Jehovah God, the covenant God, and that's what re we receive. He is Lord. From heaven to earth, from one realm of the universe to the other, in big and in little, on the good and as what you consider the bad, He is Lord of, say it with me, all. 
And that's what he offers. And I was a 10-year-old child, and I came, and I understood that he is Lord, and he is the God of the universe, and he's the Almighty God, and he's full of wisdom and love. And I came with my sin, and I came with the, all that that sin represented. I, I felt broken from God. I felt guilty before God. I was a sinner. There was nothing good about me. I had nothing to offer him except my sin and, and my re regret and my remorse. And, and I came, and I repented of that, and I came to God, and I said, if you would be willing, I give I give you my sin. I give you my heart. I give you my life. And Jesus said, yes. And he wrote my name down in the Lamb's book of life. And he promised that he would fulfill his part of the bargain. But we must trust the Lord as he leads. There is a pattern that we must follow that we will speak about today when we say these words, commit your way to the Lord. Commit your way to the Lord. The word commit is a verb. That means it's an action word. I say that on purpose. We don't just state the concept. Yes, He is Lord. That's like it were a noun. Yeah, Yes, He is the one that I bow my knee to. He is the God of the universe. He's the God of my life. And it's like stating a principle. But literally what he is saying is, I want to see the action of it. So he says, commit your way to the Lord. The word commit means to roll. Y'all get that? To roll. Or to be rolled. Or to roll oneself. Or if it goes into this part, it says to flow down from. So, when I gave Jesus my heart, I gave him my sins, I gave him my burden, I gave him those, and I rolled them off of me, and I rolled them onto his very capable shoulders, and he bore my sin. They no longer belong to me, they belong to him. And it flows down from him, right? So as I live my day, I commit myself, I join in this, and the goodness of God rolls down upon me. The action of the verb, the action of commit, is in the rolling. So daily, we wake up, good morning, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Be with me today, my Lord. I am grateful to, to be yours and, 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 and you are mine. And today as I live my life, I am living my life flowing down from you and allowing you to be the Lord of my life. To roll upon Jehovah your life, your way. Commit your way to the Lord. Way is a concept, it is a noun. It means a path, a road. It means a journey. It means a manner of living. A well-worn path. Y'all have heard me talk about this before. You know, if you've uh, traveled the same path every day, let's say you, you're, you're going from, I don't know, from your, from your front porch to the mailbox, and, and you walk through the grass and you do it every day, or, or whatever place that it may be, one thing that you're going to know is, is it's that in that well-worn path, everything else has to go away. It, nothing else can live in that path because you are constantly going in that way. Amen? It, that's our life. That's our life. We are creatures of habit. So it speaks about a habit, a course of life, a custom or a nor normal thought process. If you want to be technical about it, if you want to be scientific about it, you would say this is your neural pathway. You have a way of thinking. It may have been taught to you by someone else, but I pray, come on now, I pray that it's been redeemed by God. I pray that, 
that there's a lot of information out there that's been given to us. A, a lot of people who think that they know more than really what they do know. And, and, and it may be good for them and they want it to be good for you. And, and you may adopt some of that. But I pray that everything that we say and do in our life, in our, in our manner, in our journey, is redeemed by the way and the wisdom and the love and the grace and the goodness of God. Everything else is a false way. Jesus said what? I am the, I am the, I am the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. He is the way. So when you accept him as Lord in your life, you're taking all these thought processes, all these things that you've been taught, all these things that you are drawn to, and you redeem them by the will of God, the truths of God. Everything else doesn't fit, but, don't you hate the buts? But, we sometimes like our way more than we like his way. I don't mean to be rude when I say this, but it's true. Sometimes we respect the one who taught us more than we respect the Almighty. So we're more willing to follow what they told us rather than what God's Word says. Sometimes we want comfort, so we'll follow what we think will bring us the greatest amount of comfort. And if we choose God's path, it might be a rough road to go. The day of, La day of La Rosa, I hope I said that wrong. I know I said it wrong. I hope I said it right. But y'all know what I meant? The path to cross the path of Calvary, the path that the D of Ella Rose. See, I knew it when it came out of my mouth, it was wrong. But y'all knew what I was talking about anyway, didn't you? Was that easy? Did Jesus want to go that way? You can say yes and no, because that's right. You can say yes because it was the, the way and it was the, the, the best for us. But we know in the Garden of Gethsemane the night before, the pressure was so heavily upon him that sweat came from his brow. He was wearied and worn down by it. It really wasn't the attractive thing, but it was the right thing. So where does your path lead you? We're writing the book of our life every day. But it's not always an easy path. <clears throat> I love the Psalms, don't you? How many of y'all love the Psalms that David wrote? He wrote quite a few, didn't he? Can, can I take your Bible and turn over to Psalms 55? David wrote this psalm. Sometimes when David wrote, <clears throat> like Psalms 23, poetic almost, and, and, and it was uh, so soft and so tender. Sometimes when David wrote, it was so abrupt, it was so in your face with truth and the hardships of life. You, you read it and you say, man, he really knows what life is like and the pain of it. Psalm 55 is like that. If it's okay with you, I don't want to cut this short. And by that I mean, I want us to look at the entire psalm. Listen to what God's Word says. Give ear to my prayer, O God. Do not hide yourself from my supplication. What he was looking for was a connection. God, I know you're there, but I want you not only to hear my words my thoughts and my heart are what is important. Attend to me and hear me. I am restless in my complaint and moan noisily. He knows that he's hurting. Because of the voice of the enemy, because of the oppression of the wicked, for they bring down trouble upon me, and in wrath they hate me. Can you see the honesty here? You kind of feel it? Y'all ever been there? It's tough to go through life when you didn't choose that person as your enemy, but they chose you as the enemy. 
My heart is severely pained within me. The terrors of death have fallen upon me. Many scholars have tried to pin exactly what he was thinking about. I think it was a multitude of things. I think it could have been a, uh, the time when uh, David was running from Saul. I think it could have been the times that he was running from some of the enemies who were plotting against me. It could have even been the time when Absalom, his son, had planned and plotted an insurrection against him. And instead of standing and fighting, he just walked away because he did not want to have to fight his own son who wanted his death. Verse 5, fearfulness and trembling have come upon me. Horror has overwhelmed me. So I said, oh, that I had wings like a dove. Dove have a great ability to fly a long distance in one journey. I would fly away and be at rest. Indeed, I would, uh, I would wander far off and remain in the wilderness. Say, Lord, this is true. I would hasten my escape from the windy storm and tempest. You ever said, Lord, please just give me an escape for a moment in time. It's always in front of me, the hardship and the pains of life. Now he gets personal even more so. Destroy, O Lord, and divide their tongues. I have seen violence and strife in the city. Day and night they go around around it on its walls. Iniquity and trouble are also in the midst of it. Destruction is in its midst. Oppression and deceit do not depart from its streets. Hear the personal part. For it is not an enemy who reproaches me, then I could bear it. Nor is it one who hates me who has exalted himself against me, then I could hide from him. But it was you a man my equal, my compliance, my acquaintance. We took sweet counsel together. We walked in the house of God in the throne. Let death seize them. Ooh, he's getting honest. Let them go down alive into hell. And wickedness is in their dwelling and among them. You know, we can't lie to God. To try to put rose-colored glasses on it as you bear your heart to God really doesn't do any good since He knows your thoughts and your hearts anyway. Would it just be okay if today we got honest? I know you're in your Sunday clothes. I know you came with a, the expectation of a maybe the preacher will say something that to encourage my soul. I'm trying. I'm trying, but what I'm saying to you is don't just gloss over it because that doesn't make it go away. Be honest about it as David is trying to be. Because there you may find the very touch of healing. Verse 16. As for me, I will call upon God. And the Lord shall save me. Lord, you've done it again and again and again, time and time. Lord, you've never failed me. You've never left me alone. You've always been my Redeemer. You've always been there, evening and morning and at noon. I will pray and cry aloud. He shall hear my voice. He has redeemed my soul in peace from the battle that was against me, for there were many against me. God will hear and afflict them, even he who abides from of old, because they do not change, therefore they do not fear God. They don't change, they don't fear God. But remember what David said in Psalms 37, 1, do not fret because of evildoers, neither be envious of the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Verse 20, He has put forth His hands against those who were at peace with Him. He has broken His covenant. Do y'all know what I mean when I say an if-then situation? If you do this, then this will happen. God says, if you do this, then I will bless you. But if you walk in the ways of wickedness, if you Tie my hands behind my back so that I cannot anoint you and bless you. Mm. Verse 21, the words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war was in his hot heart. His words were softer than oil, yet they were drawn swords. That is the pain. Of the deep hurts of being hurt by a friend. 
I don't know of anything that's worse. You expect the known enemy. You don't expect the close friend. What do you do in circumstances like this? What do you do when the pains are so heavily upon your soul as they were David's? Read with me verse 22. Cast your burden on the Lord, and He shall sustain you. He shall never permit the righteous to be moved. Cast your burden to the Lord. Literally, roll that burden from off of you and let it flow down upon Him. Roll it away so there can be an opening for you, a new door of life. Let the Lord have it. Let the almighty shoulders of God have it. Let the one who can, let him bear it. Cast your burden on the Lord. How many of you came with a burden? Don't raise your hand. How many of you came with something that when you think of it, it's a dark pit in your stomach? How many of you are still carrying the scars and the wounds of the friend? How many of you have found that place that seems like there is no antidote, there is no help, there is no medicine, there is nothing except vain repetitions. All that everyone says is worthlessness. This thing stays with me. It hangs around my neck. It is the, the thing that casts me down. Would you like to be loose from it? Would you like for it to be rolled away? Verse 23, But you, O God, shall bring them down to the pit of destruction. Bloodthirsty and deceitful men shall not live out half their lives, but I will, do you see it up there? Trust in you. That's an active word. This is an action word in our life. Though all those things are there, I will commit my way unto you. I will cast my burden onto you. I will trust in you. Psalms 37, 5. Commit your way. Roll away your well-worn path. Your thoughts that lead you. The burdens that bear you. The habits that come upon you. And follow the narrow way. Wide is the way that leads to destruction. Many there are that go thereby. But the narrow gate, the narrow path, God's way, trust also in Him. That's what it says. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in Him. And He shall bring it to path. He shall bring it to pass. <clears throat> When I was 10 years old, burdened down with the calling of God, the revelation of sin in my life, you've heard me explain it many times, kind of like this. I felt like the weight was so heavily upon me, I felt like my chest was going to explode. I knew I had sinned. I knew that that was a sin against God. I knew that I bore the weight of that and everything that that meant. And I believed and I knew that there was a God who sent His Son Jesus to be my Savior, to bear my sins. I knew that He lived and died for me. I know that they buried Him and put Him in the grave and they rolled that stone up upon that door. But I also knew that on Resurrection Sunday morning, the stone was rolled away and new life came in Jesus and the presence of the redemption of God was there before me. It was an if-then thing. If I would give Him my heart, 
He would come in and save my soul. I could receive the covenant of the Almighty. Everything that He had created for me, I could make my own. Did you hear me? All of God's could become mine. All of mine would become His, never to be born again. Raised to walk in newness of life. And though I walked through the path of this earth with all that life's troubles bring me, my new life was Christ. He was my Jehovah. He was my Lord. So from that point forward, my privilege was to trust in Him. To let Him be my delight and to commit my way unto Him. And here is the things that preachers do not say enough. How often, and by the way, I've seen this with six-year-olds. I've seen it with men in their upper 80s. I have seen the blessedness of the will of man given to the mercy of God and salvation proffered and life made new. It doesn't matter what road you've walked. The Lord is there. It doesn't matter how many sins you've committed. He's willing to forgive. And I have seen as a 10-year-old would let the Lord from that point be the Lord of his life. So I wake up and I pray to him. And I call upon him. And I take that which I know and seek to live it for my benefit but for his glory. But somewhere along the way, the old way, the old path, the old life, the old teaching, the things that we were drawn to became a conflict with the ways of God. And somehow it became like this. See if I'm telling the truth. I do believe in you, Almighty God. I give my eternity to you. I give my sins to you. Hold me and keep me, and one day when I breathe my last breath, take me to heaven. And Lord, until then, I'll do the best I can, and I'm going to live my life the way I so seem to feel is right. If I get in trouble, then I will call upon you. So we live our day, I don't mean to be rude, let's just be, can we just be honest? We live our day our way. We do what seems right unto us, but David's son Solomon said, there is a way that seems right, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Why can't we live our day the way we received our covenant of salvation? I give you my all. My life no longer belongs to me. Not only my sin, I gave you my heart. I gave you my life. Right? Why can't we live our day letting Him be the Lord of our life? Modern day Christianity, or whatever they want to call it, is being seen lived out, not seeking to walk in the ways of God, but walk in what is pleasing unto us. We will yield as much as we seek to yield. We will hold on with a death grip to the rest. When what we learn to trust in Him we must trust in Him by committing our way to Him. 
to seek to know Him, to seek to follow Him, to seek to obey Him, to seek to run after the paths that He places before us, and by a childlike faith, giving our all unto Him. And if we do, then the Almighty says, I'm there. I will bring it to pass. You don't have to look for it. I'm there with you. By the way, no weapon formed against you will prosper. Are y'all good with that? Amen. I will never leave you with the almighty hand of God. I will never forsake you. I have loved you with an everlasting love. I will gather you in my arms and pull you tight. You will feel the very breath of the anointing of God upon you. That's victory. That's triumph. And you can face any of the battles of life because you've already won. You're not living for victory. You're living from victory. He has defeated it all. What an amazing God we have. It is salvation lived plain and clear. The most simple life. And so profound by how we trust in Him.